Good evening, good afternoon, good morning, brothers and sisters, wherever you are in the world. God bless you and keep you. And on the anniversary of Abraham Accords, Rabbi reveals how treaty is Abraham's vision coming alive. Another interesting one. I feel out of interest. I know that the Messiah does not belong to the rabbis. You know, I know all that, guys. Don't, please. Um, we know, but, you know, we can look. They are looking at prophecy like the rest of us, and they understand the Torah better than any of us, and probably a lot is buried around the world that we don't know of, maybe in the Vatican City, certainly in the in, in Israel that we don't know. But this article just come up and I thought this is worth sharing with you really to add to the last video that went out about the Shemitahs, the moons and the sun, the moon wobbling and the sun changing access, which fits perfectly into scripture. But this one here from Israel 365 News, uh, interesting site, good to go to. On the anniversary of Abraham Accords, Rabbi reveals how treaty is Abraham's vision come alive. And you can read that article and you'll fit these into Ishmael and Isaac. Okay, I'll leave that scripture there. Screen capture that. Take that back. That is the scripture. Genesis 2, 25, 9. On the one year anniversary of the historic Abraham Accords, popular Rabbi Y.B.I. Johnson gave a lecture on how the iconic treaty is precisely what happened in the Bible between Isaac and his brother Ishmael. Israel, Islam, okay? After where being entranged from Abraham, Ishmael eventually reunited with his brother Isaac to bury their father. I didn't know that. And this is why looking at other articles brings out a deeper depth in our thinking when we're looking from an eschat es eschatological point of view, the rabbi begins his presentation with the Genesis, with the Genesis when God told Abraham to listen to Sarah and send Yishmael away. She said to Avram, cast out that slave woman and her son, for the son of that slave shall not share an inheritance with my son. Genesis 21, 10. And we think, oh, that's hard. And we think what's going on in the world is hard and the difficult. And I've heard people say that God can't do that. God can do anything and he will bring it all to fruition. We let it down. Mankind was greatly blessed from the beginning and was to walk in the presence of our Lord God. He is doing everything back over the next, over the last and future years remaining in the 6,000 years. A day is a year and a year is a day to bring us back on course and back into his company if we believe in his son. This is the time to say that the channel is about the promotion of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and the advancement of the kingdom of Father God, whereby if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you are saved. You are saved. Do not turn back. Walk on, lest you believe in vain. That's all I've got to say on that one. Great dispute over once saved, always saved. I don't enter into it. I do what 1 Corinthians 15, 4 says, and that's it. And I just pinned to that scripture because uh, scripture is so complicated um, and deep and wide and magnificent that we, we can't as yet understand it. I'm sure when we get to heaven, we'll have a, a dongle de download where we'll go, oh, yeah, right, okay. But back to the article. This was the turning point for, for the contentious relationship between Ishmael and Isaac, according to the Rabbi Johnson. According to the Rabbi Johnson, up until the point Ishmael would try to entice Isaac with idolatry and adultery, Sarah saw what a bad influence Ishmael was on his son and so realised that the best course of action was to banish them from the estate. You see, those that walk godly and those that don't walk godly. There's the difference. There's no gray area. Believe in Jesus. He was sent by his father to give the church age a way out by his death and resurrection again. And it was written. It was written. The rabbi uses largely overlooked passages to back up his assessment of Genesis 24. There is a passage that its origin, Hebrew, original Hebrew reads this. Uh, you can put that into translate. 
You can copy. Well, no, you can't because it's on screen capture. But literally translated, it means that Isaac is coming from coming from twice. Okay, the well of Lahaira. Forgive me if I've said that wrong. Yitzhak had just come back from the coming of the beer Leheraya, you know what I mean, for he was settled on the region of Negev, Genesis twenty four sixty two. This begs the question, why would the Torah state that he is coming twice, good question, from the well of Laharoi, Laharoi, don't quote me, I know I'm getting it wrong. An interesting clue is that the well was the same well that Hagar ran away from to the Genesis 16 after being overwhelmed by Sarah's work orders. This is documented in Genesis 16. Therefore, the well is called Beer Laharoi. Laharoi? I wish it wouldn't do this. It is between Kadesh and Bered, Genesis 16, 14. I should have read this out of the King James. There, Hagar found the rest place where the sympathetic angel heard a voice and blessed his son Ishmael, and it was written several passages beforehand. Now, I just want to explain at this point that God blessed Abraham's seed, whichever one, okay? And we're talking the split between Islam at this point and Israel at this point, okay? And they will be at war with each other ever since, but the blessing still continues because God, when speaks, holds to his word he's held to his word that he sent his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life and he'll hold to the word that if we believe in him and confess that he is the lord then we will be saved it's as simple as that god does not change his mind he's the same today tomorrow until eternity finishes Let's read on. There Hagar found a resting place where a sympathetic angel heard his story and blessed the son Ishmael that is written several passages beforehand. The angel of Hashem said to the, to the further, Behold, you are with child and shall bear a son. You shall call him Ishmael, for Hashem has paid heed to your offering. Genesis sixteen eleven. Later on when the Abraham brings Isaac, his wife, Rebecca. Isaac is returning from the same well, a well he lives close to and often frequents. Yitzhak has just come back from the vicinity of Beer, Leharai. I'm not going to even say that. I should have translated that. For he was settled in the region of Negev, Genesis 26. This begs another question. What seems to be Isaac's seeming obsession with this well? A place, of commu a place to communicate. According to the famous Torah commentator, Rashi, Isaac was actually speaking to both Hagar and Ishmael at the Lahorai, I'll get it right before I finish, well, and trying to reunite Abraham with Hagar. Rashi adds that Isaac's attempt was successful and that Hagar and Keturah, Keturah is actually the same person following the name change. But it wasn't only Isaac's attempt to reconcile with Hagar, Hagar and Ishmael. That's because according to the Midrash, a form of literature that intercepts, interprets rather the, and elaborates upon Bible text. That's something that I always doubt about. When it elaborates on Bible text, it's quite clear that there could be deficits. We know that this canon, the 66 books, even without the Apocrypha, is enough to tell us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Careful when you swear on this in court, the whole truth of God and his plan from beginning to end, because he said he has written it in the beginning. He's written the end in the beginning. It is in there, brothers and sisters. It is in there. Now, I'll leave a link to this article where you can read it in its fullest, and I will put it on Patreon, and I will put it on Telegram. But let's try and find a conclusion to the article. It's quite long. Rabbi Johnson explains that, the demonst and dem and that this demonstrates that Abraham's ultimate vision was one of a worldwide reconciliation, more specifically through his son Isaac and Ishmael, his sons Isaac and Ishmael. That is why the rabbi found Abraham Accords 
to be such a fitting name for the 2021 treaty between Israel, Bahrain, Bahrain and the UAE. Interestingly, one of the main advisors deriving the accords was Avi Berkwich, whose full name is Avraham, or in English, Abraham. Okay, brothers and sisters, as I said, the link will be in the description. It will be on Patreon and Telegram where you can read the full article. I'd suggest you do because if we're Bereans, we need to absorb everything and fit together what God has given us in the end times. And I mean what God has given us. No man will know the day nor the hour unless God reveals it. And then it might be the mystery. It might be the mystery. As Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 15:51. I will show you a mystery. But he does say, I will show you a mystery, doesn't he? And in Revelation 3.3, 3, it says, Watch always lest you may not know the day or the hour. I'm convinced that if the God had revealed to the Jews what they were doing, that they wouldn't have done what they did. But Jesus had to die to fulfill the prophecy. It all had to happen, brothers and sisters. And it's coming close, closer and closer. And we are now one day nearer. I will leave you with may God bless you, keep you, make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you this day and always. God bless.